Welcome to the podcast, George Washington Carver, American Agricultural Chemist. George was born into slavery around 1860 in Diamond Grove, Missouri. He became a free person in 1865 at the end of the Civil War. Due to the death of his natural parents, George was adopted by his former masters, Moses and Susan Carver. The couple raised George and his brother James as their sons and provided some basic education for the boys. During his youth, George took their last name and would add the middle name Washington years later. George was a frail and sickly boy and was taught how to cook, make clothing, and do laundry by Mrs. Carver. From an early age, it was obvious that George was a very intelligent young man and he became very interested in plants and nature. Around age 14, he went to the nearby town of Neosho, Missouri to attend a school set up for black children. He would continue his education in Kansas where he graduated from high school. He then tried his luck at homesteading a farm in Kansas, but found the winters were too cold and the summers too dry. Wanting to attend college, he traveled to Iowa, where he attended a small college, and then went on to Iowa State Agricultural College, graduating in 1892. He obtained a master's degree in horticulture two years later. To support himself, he worked at the college as a teacher and at the school's agricultural experimental station. Carver holds the distinction of being the first African American to graduate and become a faculty member from what is now Iowa State University in Ames. Carver was offered a position at the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama from the school's director, Booker T. Washington. There, Carver was the head of the agricultural department. As well as teaching, he worked to introduce new crops into the agricultural system of the South. The Southern agriculture economy was based to a large part on the production of cotton. The decades of single crop cotton production had depleted the soil of valuable nutrients and most of the farmers were too poor to purchase expensive fertilizers to increase production. Carver introduced the idea of crop rotation between cotton and black eyed peas or peanuts in alternate years to replenish the soil of some of its natural nutrients. To encourage better nutrition in the south, Carter widely distributed his recipes using the alternate crops. Active in plant research, in 1897, Professor Carver collaborated with the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Smithsonian Institution in cataloging medicinal flora. He reported his findings to the Division of Mycology and Disease Survey. During World War I, food shortages were common. To help alleviate the problem, Carver demonstrated in Washington, D.C. how sweet potatoes could be used to produce an alternative to flour and become a viable foodstuff. Over the course of his study and work with the sweet potatoes, he would develop over 100 uses for the plant. George Carver is perhaps best known for his development of over 300 uses of the peanut plant, which includes peanut butter. Carver rose to national promise when he spoke at the Peanut Growers Conference in 1920 and gave testimony before Congress in 1921 to support passage of a tariff on imported peanuts. During those years, he would become one of the best known African Americans in the United States. His notoriety allowed him the opportunity to travel to promote Tuskegee University, the uses of peanuts, and racial harmony. During his lifetime, Carver met with three American presidents, Theodore Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge, and Franklin Roosevelt, as well as the Crown Prince of Sweden. Though he developed hundreds of new uses for plants, he was not interested in commercialization of his discoveries. He left that up to others. During the Great Depression of the 1930s, as many sank into poverty, Carver lived very frugally and used his spare money from his salary at the Institute to establish the George Washington Carver Foundation for the purpose of providing scholarships for young African Americans who wanted to gain an education in agriculture. Over the course of his long and productive career as an educator and agricultural chemist, he received numerous awards, including election as a fellow of the Royal Society of Arts of Great Britain and the NAACP Spring Arn Medal in 1923. Though he never completed his doctorate degree, he was awarded an honorary doctor of science from Simpson College and Rochester University. George Carver was a practicing Christian from the time he was a very young boy. He believed that his faith in God and his work in science were not in conflict. Starting in 1906 at Tuskegee, he led a Sunday Bible study for some of the students. George Washington Carver died on January 5, 1943 from complications from a bad fall down a flight of stairs. In commemoration of his life work and contribution to society, the United States Congress authorized the establishment of the George Washington Carver National Monument, a park located on the site of his birth in Diamond, Missouri. This was the first federal monument of the United States dedicated to an African American. I hope you enjoyed this podcast about George Washington Carver. 
If you want to know more about this man and his life, I have included some links in the description. Please don't forget to give the podcast a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and thank you for listening.